It was a bright Sunday afternoon. Choo Choo was very hungry. She was waiting to eat some lunch. Mom, I'm really hungry. May I have something to eat, please? Yes, Choo Choo. You can eat your lunch now. Vegetable soup? I don't want this soup, Mom. You must have this soup, Choo Choo. It's delicious and full of vegetables that are very good for you. Uh, but it's full of spinach and broccoli. I only like carrots and potatoes. I'll only eat the carrots and potatoes. You must eat all of the vegetables, Choo Choo. Each of them have different special vitamins. They will help you grow. No! I'll only eat the carrots and the potatoes. Choo Choo's mother and father were very worried about Choo Choo. They wanted her to eat a variety of vegetables to help her stay healthy and grow. We must help Choo Choo learn to eat and enjoy more types of vegetables. Why don't we take her to the vegetable market? She will have fun meeting the farmer there, and she'll learn about some vegetables too. Good idea. Later that day, Choo Choo's mother and father took her to the vegetable market. There was a friendly-looking farmer there. The carrots and potatoes, Mr. Farmer. Carrots and potatoes don't grow at this time of the year, Choo Choo. Their season is over. But this is the time of year when we grow other delicious vegetables, like broccoli and okra. Why don't you try them? They'll make you smart and strong. Just then, the broccoli started to talk to Choo Choo. Hi, I am broccoli. I'm very, very yummy. Don't I look like a bunch of flowers? My vitamins can give you superpowers. My stalk is delicious and slender. My florets are yummy and tender. I can make you strong and pretty. Roast me with butter and I'm yummy. Put me in a soup and you'll have lovely hair. And if you want bright eyes, I'll surely take care. You sound very delicious and healthy, Broccoli. Thank you for telling me all about you. Fuss so much about eating you anymore. The farmer then introduced Choo Choo to another vegetable. It was okra. Meet okra, Choo Choo. Okra? The okra began to talk to Choo Choo too. Ra ra ra! I'm okra. I'm long and green okra. I'm shaped like a long finger. I'm also called a lady's finger. I can clear your face of pimples. Just eat me up. It's so simple. I'm full of vitamins A, B, and C. I'm very good, as you can see. It was nice meeting you, Okra. And I'm never going to fuss about eating you now. <laughs> Thank you. The farmer then showed Choo Choo many other vegetables. Choo Choo, these are cabbages. These are eggplants. 
These are beets. And these are radishes. And they are all very delicious and good for you. You must come to the market again so you can learn more about them too. Wow! They all look so delicious and healthy. When it was time to return home, the farmer gave Choo Choo a basket full of fresh vegetables. These vegetables are for you, Choo Choo. I'm sure you'll like them. Thank you, Mr. Farmer. When Choo Choo returned home, she couldn't wait to eat the vegetables. Mother, will you make a soup with these vegetables, please? Yes, Choo Choo. Mmm, delicious. Choo Choo then asked her mother and father if they would help her grow a vegetable garden. Vegetables in our garden, so we can eat fresh vegetables every day. From that day onwards, Choo Choo looked forward to eating vegetables every day. Yummy! It was recess. Choo Choo was watching her friends play on the playground. Cha Cha was on the swing. Yippee! I'm having so much fun! Chica and Chiku were having fun on the seesaw. Up, down! Up, down! <laughs> Even though everyone was having fun, everyone was making sure that the other children had a turn. Cha-Cha, can I sit on the swing now? Of course! Would you like a turn on the seesaw? Yes! Please, come and have a turn! All the children were being very thoughtful. But then, Cusley came into the playground. He started pushing the children. He wanted the play equipment all for himself. Hey, get up! Go and find something else to do. I want a swing. I want the seesaw for myself. Choo Choo saw how Cusley's selfish behavior was ruining everyone's fun. So she called out to her friends. Let's play a game. It's a fun new one. Each of us will shout out the name of an animal. And then everyone will make the sound that animal makes. Who wants to start? I want to... Horse! Nay, nay, nay! Nay, nay! <laughs> it's my turn now. Cow! Moo, moo, moo! <laughs> Cat! Meow! 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 <laughs> While Choo Choo and the others were having fun playing their game, Cusley was going higher and higher on the swing. Ha-ha! I'm gonna go as high as the sky! Suddenly, Cusley went so high that he was about to fall off the swing. Luckily, Choo Choo saw him. Yikes! Huh? Friends! Cusley's in trouble! Let's catch him before he falls! Choo Choo and the others caught Cusley and saved him from really hurting himself. I was mean to you all. 
But you all still helped me. I'm sorry for my bad behavior. Please forgive me. Don't worry, Cosly. We are your friends, and we are always here to help you. Cosly apologized to the children and promised never to be mean again. Everyone forgave him and invited him to join their games. Pig! Oink, oink, oink! Oink, oink, oink! <laughs> It was a Sunday afternoon in the heat of summer. Choo Choo's mother was working in the kitchen. The children were playing games and having fun. Yay! And the grown ups were relaxing. The hot sun made Choo Choo feel thirsty. Phew! It's really hot today. I better get myself some cool water to drink. When Choo Choo went into the kitchen, she saw her mother working there. Oh! Look at Mother! She looks so tired. But she's still cooking everyone's favorite things. And she's doing all the housework all by herself. Poor mother. She's trying to make everyone happy and comfortable all by herself. I should help her. Choo Choo stopped playing and went to help her mother. Mother, I'd like to help you. That's very thoughtful of you, Choo Choo. When the rest of the family saw Choo Choo helping her mother, they decided to help out too. Choo Choo's father started washing the dishes. Choo Choo's grandpa filled the water bottles. Choo Choo's grandma helped with the cooking. Cha Cha set the dinner table. The baby didn't want to be left out. And came forward to help too. Choo Choo's mother felt very happy when she saw the whole family helping out. Thank you, everyone. It's really nice of you to help me out. I'm really lucky to have such a loving family. I love you all. Choo Choo felt very happy when she realized that she had set a good example for the others and made her mother's work easier. And we love you too, Mother! Mwah! Cha-Cha was a naughty little boy. He liked to roam around on his own. A habit that worried his mother very much. Cha-Cha? I wish you wouldn't wander around on your own. You could get lost. I need you to stay close to me, okay? Oh, Mom, you worry too much. Cha-Cha's mother only wanted to keep him safe. But Cha-Cha regularly forgot what she said and would wander about on his own. Cha-Cha, please come back! One day, Miss Dorothy, Cha-Cha's teacher, assigned homework to all of the children. Children, your assignment when you go home today is to learn your parents' phone numbers. That way, 
If you ever get lost, you will be able to call them and tell them where you are. All the children went home and learned their parents' phone numbers. Four, one, five, three. Cha Cha, however, didn't bother learning his parents' phone number. Instead, he played with his new toy car. A few days later, Choo Choo and Cha Cha were playing in the park. As they were walking in, Cha Cha noticed a balloon floating by. He immediately started running after it. Oh, look! A balloon! I'm going to catch it! Come back, Cha Cha! But. Cha-Cha didn't listen to Choo-Choo. He ran after the balloon and didn't even pay attention to where he was going. I'm going to get that balloon! After some time, Cha-Cha realized that he was lost. Cha-Cha was afraid. He sat beneath a tree and began to cry. I wish I could call my mom, but I don't even know her phone number. Choo-Choo looked and looked but couldn't find Cha-Cha anywhere. Fortunately, she was very close to her aunt's house and was able to call her mother from there. Choo-Choo's mother rushed out when she heard what had happened. When she arrived at the park, Choo-Choo got into the car and told her where she had last seen Cha-Cha. Cha-Cha ran down that street. Then let's go look for him there. The car slowly rolled down the street honking. Cha-Cha recognized the sounds of his car's horn. That sounds like my car. Mom must be close by. Cha-Cha stood up and called out to the car. Mom? Choo-Choo! I'm here! Luckily for Cha-Cha, his mother and Choo-Choo found him very quickly. Mom! Look! There he is! Oh, thank goodness! Cha-Cha was very happy to see Choo-Choo and his mother. He hugged them both very tightly. I'm so glad to see you both. I was really scared. We are happy to see you too, Cha-Cha. Cha-Cha promised that he would never go away on his own again. He also learned his mother's phone number so he could call her if he ever got lost again. Four, one, five, three. In the city of Scottsdale, there lived a girl named Choo Choo. She was a sweet girl with a very kind heart. But she was so careless that she kept losing her school supplies. Although it upset her, Choo Choo's mom kept buying new school supplies. Then one Monday morning, her mommy yelled out, Choo Choo, could you get me your backpack, please? Yes, mommy. I'll be right there. Here it is. I've got to run to the restroom. I'll be right back. 
Her mom took out her pencil case and found it to be empty. Hmm, that's it. I've had enough of her losing her school supplies. This needs to stop. She needs to start being more responsible. Did you wash your hands? I sure did, Mommy. Good job. Listen, young lady. I have been patient with you. I have replenished your empty pencil case with school supplies every single day. I have replenished it with two new pencils and a sharpener again today. These are going to be your school supplies for the whole week. If you lose them, you won't get new ones for another week. Have I made myself clear? Yep. I'm going to be really careful with them, Mommy. Good. The school bus will be here any minute. Let's get going. So, how was your day at school? It was good. I had a lot of fun. Okay, time to grab a fruit. Fruit? Ew! I will pretend I didn't hear that. Are you done with the fruit? Yes! Good. Do you have all of your school supplies? Choo Choo looked at her mom with a blank stare. I don't remember. Hmm, go fetch me your pencil case. Choo Choo walked to her backpack, grabbed her pencil case, and gave it to her mom. Nature calls. I'll be right back. Choo Choo's mom opened up the pencil case and once again was shocked to see it empty. Now I've had it. This girl needs to learn responsibility. Choo Choo, are you done? Nearly done, Mom. Be right there. Hurry up. We are heading out for some shopping. Ta-da! I'm here. Put on your shoes and hop into the car. Choo Choo ran to put on her shoes and jumped into the car. Let's head to the store and pick up a few things. Sure, Mom. Uh, do I get a treat? Hmm, one small chocolate. And that's it. Yay! Thank you! Choo Choo's mother stopped by the store. Choo Choo was busy walking along the aisle, searching for her chocolate. Her mom picked up a few packs of pencils, a few sharpeners, and some chocolates. The car stopped by a small foster home. Come on, Choo Choo! Choo Choo got down and held her mom's hand and walked along. Children, Mrs. Charlie is here to visit us. Could you all please come here? All the kids assembled in the visitor's area. Hello, little ones. Hello, Mrs. Charlie. This is my daughter, Choo Choo. Hello, Choo Choo. She wanted to visit you all and play with you. Aww, sweet of her. Could you kids teach her how to draw? Yes, Mrs. Charlie. One kid ran and fetched a piece of paper and the pencil case. Come on, Choo Choo. Let's all draw. The kids gave the pencil case to Choo Choo. Choo Choo opened it and found a small pencil with a broken eraser and a broken sharpener. Choo Choo looked at her mom and her eyes flooded with tears. Hey! Why are you crying? Cry! Don't cry! Choo Choo silently walked over to her mom and whispered in her ear. 
Choo Choo's mom gave a pack of pencils to Choo Choo. Choo Choo, share these pencils with your friends here. Yes, mommy. All the kids jumped with joy. They sharpened the new pencils and started to draw. A few hours went by. Choo choo, it's getting late. Give them all a hug. I know you will miss them all. Let's come back another day. Okay, Mommy. Choo Choo gave them all a hug. I'll see you all soon. Choo Choo was awfully quiet. What's wrong, Angel? Choo Choo's eyes filled with tears. She started to talk. Mommy, my friends back there had one pencil with a broken eraser and a broken sharpener. Yes, they did. And here I've been losing my school supplies every single day. Hmm. I have been careless with my school supplies. I have lost so many pencils and sharpeners. If I had been careful, I could have shared them with my friends. Mommy? Yes, darling. I will never ever lose my school supplies again. I have realized my mistake. I will be responsible, Mommy. Good, sweetheart. I'm glad you realized it. Mommy kissed Choo Choo. And from that day on, Choo Choo never again lost her school supplies. She also made a point to visit her friends every weekend and play with them. Choo Choo and her friends lived happily ever after. In the quiet suburb of Scottsdale, there lived a girl named Chiku. One lovely Sunday morning, Chiku's mom was talking to Chiku's dad. Honey, I'm worried because Chiku has gotten into the habit of saying no. No! 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 First it started with food, and now it has crossed over into every single thing. Next month, she'll turn six. But her habit of saying no hasn't changed one bit. This is starting to worry me. I'm worried about it, too. We thought she would grow out of it. But this has gone too far. It's time we confront her and get the message across loud and clear. It's time she gets a taste of her own medicine. It might be bitter, but it's what's good for her. We'll deal with her soon. Chiku has been invited to a birthday party today. Let me go wake her up. Chiku's mom walked to Chiku's room to wake her up. Chiku, wake up, darling. Remember, you have been invited to your friend's birthday party. No! Before her mom could finish, all she heard was a big no. Okay with me, but don't come crying to me later. A few hours later, Chiku's mom heard a loud yell. Mom! Why didn't you wake me up? I should be at my friend's birthday party by now. Now I'm gonna be late. I'm missing out on all the fun. I did wake you up, and you just screamed no. Chiku got ready and came down. She grabbed a glass of orange juice. She found that mom had toasted a few slices of bread. Ew! Toast again? I'm sick of toast. Make me pancakes, mom. The next moment, mom replied, no. Okay, fine. I won't eat anything. I'll just eat at the party. Suit yourself. Yeah, yeah. It's getting late. Drive me to the party. 
Chiku's mom replied with a big no. But mom, it's already late. No. Chiku's eyes filled with tears. She sat down in a chair and started to mumble to herself. What's wrong with mom? Why is she doing this? She thought through all the things she had done. Chiku realized that she had done the same thing to her mom, always saying no to every single thing. Chiku walked up to her mom, hugged her, and said to her, "Mommy, I realized that I have been a brat all along. I have said nothing but no for everything. I realize it now, and I feel ashamed. I won't blindly say no to everything anymore. And if I do say no." I'll be sure to talk it out with you. Chiku's mom hugged her and said, "Ah, I'm glad you have realized that saying no to everything is bad. Yes, we can always agree to disagree, but we have to at least talk about it. I hope I won't hear a blunt no for everything in the days ahead. No, mom." Now, now, you just said a no. Mommy, that no meant yes. <laughs> I got you. From that day on, Chiku stopped saying no to everything, and instead started a habit of talking it out whenever she had to say no. Chu, Cha Cha, Chiku, and Chika all attended the same school. It was a big school with many hallways. Cha Cha was mischievous. He used to run in the hallways. <laughs> One day, Cha Cha ran so quickly. That he accidentally bumped into a little boy who was walking in the hallway. The little boy fell down and hurt himself. Ow! Uh oh! Cha Cha got quite scared by what had just happened. So he hid and watched as some students and teachers came to help the boy. I've got a cut. Huh? Cha Cha sat down in his classroom very quietly. His teacher, Miss Dorothy, was playing a game with the children there. But Cha Cha didn't enjoy himself. He couldn't stop thinking about the accident. Let's play a game, children. I'll tell you a letter of the alphabet, and you must tell me some words that begin with it. Let's begin with the letter A. A is for apple. Come on, give me another word that starts with A. Accident. Yes, accident. Begins with an A. Now, tell me a word that begins with the letter B. B, B, blood. Huh? Huh? Did you just say blood, Cha Cha? Uh, I meant bud. Hmm. During recess. Cha Cha sat all by himself. He couldn't even eat his snacks because he was so worried about the boy. Boo! I've got a cut. When the next class began, Cha Cha was still quite upset. Cha Cha, please read what I've written on the board. Cha Cha. 
Miss Dorothy realized that Cha-Cha was worried about something. She took him aside and spoke to him. Cha-Cha, dear, are you worried about something? Yes, Miss Dorothy. Cha-Cha then told Miss Dorothy all about the accident. Oh, dear. I hope somebody gave the boy first aid. I don't know. Come on, Cha-Cha. We'll find out. Miss Dorothy took Cha-Cha to the boys' classroom. Luckily, the school nurse had given him first aid and had put a bandage on the cut. Cha-Cha then apologized to the boy. I'm sorry. It's all my fault. I shouldn't have been running in the hallway. Cha-Cha thought the boy would be very upset. But the boy was very friendly. He forgave Cha-Cha immediately. Don't worry, Cha-Cha. It was an accident. Come on, let's be friends. High five! Huh? Cha-Cha was feeling a lot better. He thanked Miss Dorothy for her help. Thank you, Miss Dorothy. I promise I won't run in the hallway anymore. Good, Cha-Cha. Cha-Cha kept his promise. He never ran in the hallways again. And if he saw anyone running, he would stop them. Stop! Don't run in the hallway! It was a bright Sunday morning. Choo Choo was playing in the park when she heard a strange sound. making that sound. It must be a little animal that lives in the park. Choo Choo looked around and found a squirrel. Hello, little one. I am so happy to see you. But you're not looking very happy. You look like you're crying. Oh, your paw is hurt, isn't it? Choo Choo noticed that the squirrel's paw was injured. She immediately picked up the squirrel and took it with her. Don't worry, little one. I'll take you to someone who will help you feel better. Just as Choo Choo was leaving the park, Cusley called out to her. Choo Choo, wait! But Choo Choo didn't hear Cusley. Choo Choo hurried and took the squirrel to a veterinarian. A veterinarian is a doctor that treats animals. Doctor, I found this squirrel in the park. I think its paw is injured. Good work, Choo Choo. This squirrel is in a lot of pain. Just as Choo Choo and the vet were talking, Cusley came in. Choo Choo, that is my pet squirrel. Give it back to me. I'm sorry, Cusley. I had no idea. I brought the squirrel here because it was crying. Look, its paw is injured. I know that. The squirrel hurt its paw because it was trying to run away when I was putting it in a cage. Cusley, you shouldn't have done that. It isn't nice to hurt little animals or put them in cages. We can talk about that later, children. First, let's help this squirrel. The vet carefully put some medicine on the squirrel's paw. He then wrapped it with a clean bandage. In no time, the squirrel looked like it was feeling much better. 
The vet then spoke to Cusley. Choo Choo is right, Cusley. It isn't nice to hurt animals. This squirrel was in a lot of pain because of you. And the squirrel's home is in a tree, not in a cage. Choo Choo, I think you should take this little squirrel back to where it belongs. Huh? Choo Choo lovingly carried the squirrel back to the park. She left the squirrel near a tree where some other squirrels were playing. You can go home now, little one. Take care. Choo Choo then pointed out to Cusley how happy the squirrel looked. Cusley, look! Doesn't the squirrel look happy to be here with its friends? You're right, Choo Choo. I shouldn't have hurt the squirrel. I promise I won't hurt any little animal again. Thanks to Choo Choo, the squirrel was back in the park living happily with its friends. And Cusley kept his promise. He never again hurt any little animal. Cusley was a fussy little boy. He always complained about everything. This cushion isn't soft enough. Ew! I don't like this ice cream. Chica, the gift you gave me isn't nice at all. Huh? Cusley's mother was quite worried about him. Cusley grumbles and fusses about everything. He is very rude. He must learn how it makes others feel when he complains like that. One day, Cusley's mother came up with an idea. She spoke to Choo Choo and Cusley's other friends. need your help, children. Cusley's mother then asked Cusley to invite his friends home. Cusley, why don't you invite your friends over tomorrow? You can all play together. I'll help you bake cookies and make chocolate milkshakes. Good idea, Mom. Cusley liked the idea. And so, he invited all his friends. Please come over tomorrow. We'll have lots of fun. The next morning, Cusley took out all of his favorite toys and games. We're going to have fun playing with these things. He then baked cookies and made chocolate milkshakes. Cusley then made the living room very comfortable for his friends. Soon, Cusley's friends came by. Hi, Cusley. Hi, everyone. Come on, let's play. Cusley brought his toys and games out. These are my favorite toys and games. Let's play with them. But Chacha and Chica made a fuss. I don't want to play indoors, Cusley. I want to go out. Huh? I don't like your toys and games. They are boring. Huh? Cusley didn't know what to do. He felt like Chacha and Chica were being very fussy. Cusley then brought out the cookies and milkshakes he had made. Everyone! 
baked cookies and made chocolate milkshakes for all of us. I hope you like them. Everyone took a cookie and a milkshake. But to Cusley's surprise, they all started grumbling. This cookie is very hard. This cookie is too soft. My milkshake isn't milky. My milkshake needs more chocolate. Huh? Cusley was very disappointed to see his friends fussing and grumbling so much. All Cusley wanted to do was have fun with his friends. But they kept fussing and complaining about everything. It's cold here! No, it's too hot. I don't like these cushions. They aren't soft enough. Huh? Huh? Cusley couldn't understand why his friends were being so fussy. His head began to spin, and so he sat down and did nothing. Ah! Oh. After Cusley's friends left, Cusley went up to his mother. were so fussy today. They complained about everything. I just didn't know what to do. I don't want to be like them. So I'm never going to fuss or grumble again. Cusley's mother's idea had worked. And Cusley never grumbled or fussed about anything again. <laughs> <laughs>